This video is sponsored by Bark. What's up guys, Shane Starnes here. I've been using the Bark app to help protect my kids and family for the past year. So when Bark reached out to me to take a look at their brand new Bark phone, of course, I was pretty excited. Before the Bark app, my method of parental control was just telling my kids that I had access to their phone at any given time. The thought behind that is that knowing that I have access to their phone and can look through their history would prevent them from wanting to go places and doing things on the internet that they shouldn't be doing. The only issue with that, first of all, it's not efficient. I'm not a computer, I'm not a robot, I can't go through thousands of text messages, I can't scroll through weeks and months of internet history, and I can't look at all the videos that my kids have watched on YouTube. The other issue with my method prior to Bark is that it doesn't really protect kids from the other people on the internet. Those people can still access your kids if you don't have some type of safeguard in place. The main reason that I love Bark is that it helps me to protect my kids without taking away their privacy. So they can rest assured that I'm not looking at every text message that they send or even looking at every website that they visited. I'm only notified when problems arise and then I can take action based on those notifications. The thing that I love about the Bark phone is that all of the parental controls that I know and love from Bark are just simply built into the phone. It's already able to scan my child's text, email, social media, and apps for digital dangers and send me alerts without me having to go through the extra process of getting an application set up. I don't have to worry about compatibility issues with different devices. It's just going to work. I also love just how customizable the parental settings are on the Bark phone and the fact that the Bark phone kind of grows with your child. So it's not a one size fits all. The parental controls that I need for my 13 year old are not the same parental controls that I need for my eight year old. And I can customize and change these as I go. Also love the fact that this is a sleek, state-of-the-art Samsung phone. It's not some bulky, oversized, embarrassing kitty phone, and my kids can feel confident carrying this phone around, and they don't have to be embarrassed, and they don't. their friends don't even have to know that I have such good parental controls on their phone. Kids are pretty smart these days. If there's something on their phone that they don't want you to see, you're not going to see it. Um, kids know how to delete text messages. They know how to use incognito mode on their browser. They know how to download and install applications and then hide them deep inside a folder. The Bark phone includes tamper-proof controls. Children can't delete text messages, download workaround VPNs, or change the parental controls you set. Let's go ahead and take the Bark phone out of the box, get it set up, and then take a deep dive into all the parental controls and features that are available. This is the phone. We'll go ahead and get this out of the box. This is a Samsung Galaxy A13 device, which is a great phone for someone that's eight years old like my son. I'm gonna be setting this up for my son, Carter. I think this is just gonna be a great option for him. There is a bit of reading material here with a QR code to scan to get everything set up. You've also got a USB-C charge cord, so it does include the cable. You'll need to find and use a charge brick that you already have. There's no charge brick in the box. And then we have our phone. I'm gonna go ahead and power this up. All right, so the first thing that we're greeted with is a QR code to get this set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and scan this QR code with my phone, click on the link, and it already knows that this phone belongs with Carter. So I already kind of set that up whenever I was ordering the phone, so it already knows that this goes to Carter. Okay, now we'll set up the Wi-Fi. Okay, now it's asking to set up a VPN. Go ahead and enable this. This is necessary for all the parental controls to work correctly. Okay, and now we can set up all of our settings from within our parental control center. We have the phone connected to the account. It's going to ask you to confirm all the settings. First up, we've got the App Store. You can allow this or turn it off. I do love that Bark phones allow complete access to the Play Store, so you can enable that if you want your kids to be able to download games and stuff like that. I love this option to require app approval. So yes, they can access the App Store, but you're gonna get a notification uh, asking for approval before they actually install the app. So you're gonna be able to see every application that's installed on your child's phone. Texting and calling, you can, you can turn texting on or off. And I love this option here to require contact approval. Um, this way, if you wanna set this up to where they can only contact you and your spouse or your parents and your spouse's parents, aunts and uncles, um, or even friends, you'll get a notification for approval and you'll be able to set up the exact numbers 
that can contact uh, by call or text your child. You're even able to disable or enable the camera here and you can turn on or off web browsing. I'll turn it on, but we are going to set up parameters for, for web browsing. So here you have options to either transfer a phone number or get a new number. So if you're coming from a previous family plan or something like that and you wanna keep that number, you can do that here or get a new phone number. All right, so now the phone has the initial setup. You've got all kinds of other options here for settings. Uh, we can go into the Bark phone. We've got monitoring that we can set up, screen time, location, and insights. We'll go ahead and do all of that now. So I'm gonna click on the Bark phone. Okay, so you've got all kinds of options here. You can, uh, if we go into the text here, you can turn on or off text. You can turn on or off the camera, and you can turn on or off web browsing. If we jump into this other settings here, this is where you can change your settings for allowing the App Store requiring app approval and allowing apps to be removed. You can also change the contact settings and you can go in here and add contact. So if there's a specific person, you can put their number in here and give them a description. So we could go 251, uh, 123, 1234, and that's Jeff. All right, and then you would add that contact. Now that you've approved and added this contact, your child could be um, contacted by this person that you've set up. I love this option here. You can set an alarm for your child from your phone. Um, you know, my eight-year-old, he's an eight-year-old, right? So at least once or twice a week, he's late getting out of bed, and it's usually because he forgot to set an alarm. That's not an issue anymore because I can add alarms here. So I can add uh, a one-time or a recurring alarm. So if I want him to wake up every single morning during the week at 7 a.m. for school, I can set that up and then his phone will go off and I'll know that it went off. That way, if he's late getting up, I can be like, look, dude, I set up the alarm. I know it went off. Okay, and then you can turn on or off the settings app. Okay, there's also time limits. Different times of day require different rules. Obviously, uh, kids are allowed to take phones to school in most areas these days, but you know, you don't want your kids to be distracted by their phone while at school. So you can set up different rules uh, depending on the time of day. Uh, you can set up rules for bedtime. So maybe after eight o'clock, they can still watch some videos on YouTube, but they can't send and receive text messages. Those are things that you can set up in the rules and the time limits. Um, you can also pause devices here. If you really need your child to focus for the next 15 minutes, or you can see that they have just kind of like been on their phone too much, you can set it to pause there. Um, or you can pause it until you resume it. So if they just need to not be on their phone for the weekend or for the rest of the day, um, if you're like me, you kind of earn time on the phone. So if your room's not cleaned up, then you can't really be on your phone. Uh, or if your grades are not where they need to be, then you don't really need access to your phone. So these are things that you can set up right there. I love that you can do a time limit for total categories or specific applications. So if you see that your child's on YouTube far too often, you can go in, select YouTube, and limit the time that they're actually allowed to use that specific application. You can set up routines. So in that same screen there for the rules, you can set up an actual schedule. So if you know that your kid's gonna be at school Monday through Friday, you can go in here and add Monday through Friday and put that on school rules at a specific time. So 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then once you have that set, you can set up another rule uh, or another schedule for bedtime rules after a certain time. Uh, so I just love all the customization that you really have with the Bark phone. So you'll notice that you do have some other options here. If we click on monitoring, these applications are all monitored by default. So TikTok, Snapchat, Google Chrome, Steam, uh, WhatsApp, Kick, all of these, Discord, all of these are by default. If you wanna add new applications, there are several other applications that you can add. If you know that your child's on Instagram, you can set that up, you can set up Twitter. All of these applications um, are able to be monitored on the Bark phone. This can even monitor your email applications and it can monitor both Chrome and Microsoft Edge. All right, so while we're in the monitoring here, we'll go ahead and jump into settings. The way the Bark works is it has a custom algorithm that can monitor your child's activity and kind of look for red flags. So when it sees those red flags, and it even can give you a flag for lingo and terms that you don't even know about or that 
Uh, maybe they're popular in youth culture, but you're just not aware of. Okay, so these are some of the things that it can monitor for anxiety, body image or eating related, bullying, change in account activity, dangerous organizations, depression, drug, alcohol related content, hate speech, inappropriate behavior or content, medically concerning content, profanity, public profile, risky app or site usage, self-harm or suicidal content, sexual content, violence, weapons. All of these can be changed. So if you want every single alert that comes through about anxiety, you can say all or none, and you can just determine what's most important to you or what you want to be made aware of as it is happening in real time on your child's phone. Another thing that I really wanted to make you aware of here, if we jump into screen time and then rules, and then we go to uh, default rules and settings, here's where you can really customize what is allowed and not allowed. So right up front, sexual content is automatically blocked. There are several social media applications here that are blocked by default. If there's one that you're okay with your child using, maybe you're okay with Instagram, you can allow Instagram. Okay, we'll go to other social media apps. There are even more applications that can be monitored there. All of these games, you can either turn them on or off so you can allow them or disable them. And you know, you can set this on the fly. So if you need to just turn off games for a day or two, you can come in here and just turn off all games. Streaming services, if there's a specific streaming service that you would prefer your child not to access, so like for my family, um, there are certain things that they can watch on HBO Max, but uh, they would need to watch those with me. So that's something that I can easily block. And then I really love this feature here. You can totally block e-commerce websites. So like Amazon shopping and eBay. You also have safe search options for Google being DuckDuckGo. And then if you turn this on, this also blocks search engines that don't have a safe search feature and you can turn on or off restricted mode for YouTube. And then you can turn on and off access to applications. So even if it's not included in Bark's monitored apps, if they have an application on their phone and you want to just block it, you can go to the installed applications, um, go through and block specific applications. You've also got an option for location. If you click on location, that's gonna give you the exact location of where your child and their phone are. So this can also give you directions to how to get there. It can tell you how long they've been there. You can open a map to show you exactly where they are on say Google Maps. If you wanna be alerted when your child arrives or leaves certain locations, whenever they get there, I'll be notified that they've arrived and then I'll be notified when they leave. So I also like that feature. You also have this option for insights. If you go to the insights here, this is gonna give you a rundown of everything that's kind of happened on your child's device. Okay, let's jump over here to the actual Bark phone and kind of test this out. So I should, I've given access to the camera over on my parent applications. So I should be able to open up the camera and take photos, no issues there. Okay, so I did go through and block the camera and it just takes the camera app completely away. So uh, there's no access to the camera because I've got it blocked. Okay, and then as soon as I enable that, it takes a few minutes for it to come back, but this the camera app will show back up, there it is. If I wanna turn off web browsing, I can turn that off there. And if I try to go into the Chrome app, it's disappeared. It's not even there. So that's kind of how that works. All right, if I want to make a call, I go to the keypad here, 251-123-1234. And I'll try to call that number. And it's going to ask me to uh, contact request because that's what I've set up. So I can request that contact. Um, I can say who this is. Maybe this is uh, my friend Joe. I hit done. And then over here on my phone, I now have a contact request and I can go ahead and confirm that. Uh, I just confirmed that it was blocked. I'll go back and allow and confirm that. So you can either block or allow and then confirm. And then now, now I should be able to call this number and it will go through. Same thing for text messages. You are able to contact those numbers that have already been approved. Okay, let's jump into the Play Store and see about downloading an application here. I'm gonna try YouTube. All right, we'll go ahead and install it. Now that it's installed, it's asking for the app request. So we're gonna go ahead and we should get a request on the parent phone. I can either choose to allow or block. So in this case, I will allow it. Okay, and then here I can actually set up the settings for this application. So I do want this to be monitored. I can review the screen time and rules here as well. So we'll go ahead and continue. And now we're done and there's access to 
there's monitored access to YouTube. All right, next up, let's jump into the Chrome browser. We should be able to access websites that are approved. So ESPN.com should be no issue here. That's gonna load up. Let's go to pbskids.org. That's one that they love. And we should be able to access that without any issues, and we can. Uh, let's try something that they shouldn't be looking at. This is blocked on the parental app, so it shouldn't even come up or it's you know set for safe search, so we shouldn't have anything inappropriate to pop up here, and we don't. An inappropriate website to see if it will load. Okay, and the website has been blocked, so it's not gonna be able to go through. Not only did it block the inappropriate website, but it also gives me a notification that it was attempted, so if we go to insights, we can go down here to blocked, recently blocked, and it's gonna show me what was blocked. But now that I know that it was attempted, I can have that conversation with my child. Um, you know, why is it that that's blocked and, and why don't we approve of that content? You can have those conversations with your kids. Okay, so having gone through everything, I am very satisfied with how safe this is, and I feel like I can hand this phone over to my eight-year-old and not have any issues going forward knowing that they are safe on the internet. As you can see, the Bark Phone is the best all-in-one solution for protecting your kids and family from all the dangers that are present online. I'll be sure to include the links in the description for where you can pick up your Bark Phone today. That about wraps it up for this video. Thanks guys for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.